Hi, I'm Simon King, and I want to show you today lumbar disc lesions, because di diagnosing lumbar disc lesions can be a real hassle at times, especially if you're using the traditional straight leg raising and reflexes and pinwheel testing, which are all good in severe cases, but they tend to miss uh, a lot of the more minor cases, and they're also not that diagnostic. I want to show you today a little technique that uh, has always allowed me to find the side of the lesion, the size of the lesion, and whether or not the lesion needed surgery. And it's uh, very simple, very straightforward, um, and I'll show you it in real time with a patient. This patient has uh, had five years of sciatica, he's had eight or nine injections into the nerve root. Um, and he's worried that those are going to stop working and he's going to need surgery. So watch what happens and then I'll explain it to you. We're going to start with your feet. Let me just drop the camera down a bit. And if you wouldn't mind uh, giving me the good foot first, the right one. And what I'm going to do is see how strong your feet are, okay? All right? I want you to point your toes down and push your foot to the middle. Ready, push against me, ready, go. That is perfect, very good. Push it down, push it outwards now, and that's good as well. And last one, I want you to push your toes down and then pull your toes back towards you, back up, that's right. Pull against me, that's perfect. Now the other leg, and push your toes down, push them into the middle and push your foot outwards. Struggling. Anytime you're ready. No, push it down and outwards. Okay. So you'll notice when you did that same yeah. movement on the other foot yeah. and you pushed it out, it actually moves, yeah, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it absolutely. moves out. This one, when you push it down, now try to move it out, nothing happens. Yeah. And, you, and also, if I now counteract that, you push against me, you don't have the force no, 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 no. in it that you should have. Yeah. So why do you think that would be? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I did think of one other thing. When I had the knee surgery, Yeah. Um, I, got, I lost the nerves down the front, so I've got, this is all numb. Right. I don't know and, if that's It might be that. Most usually, we know where this nerve comes from that drives this muscle that anchors your ankle. We know where it comes from. So if it's trapped in your back, then it's going to be weak down here. Right, yeah. So pull your toes back to you now, and the toes are good. So we're just left with this muscle. Yeah, yeah. Push it out that way. And what happens now if you bend over to the right? That's it. And now push your foot out. Not much. Not much. Bend over to the left and now push, keep your foot pointed down, that's it. Now push it out. And now it is working. Yeah. Whereas if you sit up straight again and push it down, push that way, that's not working. So it only works when you go that way. Yeah, yeah. And this indicates a very specific type of disc bulge. So although you haven't been told that, there is a disc bulge that gets better when you go to the left. And that takes the pressure off the nerve down here. Right. And that is a good sign because that means that movement is able to relieve your trapped nerve. Right. Which hopefully means we can find out a way of wow. un untrapping it without surgery. Wow. Okay. Okay. So the first thing you do to test a lumbar disc is to make sure the patient is sitting because that's what puts the most pressure on the disc. You then raise the foot up and now you've done your straight leg raise so that's done and dusted. You have the patient point their toes away and now you're going to take them into inversion and then eversion. Starting with the inversion first, this is the tibialis posterior muscle and this is the L5 nerve root which is the L4-5 disc space. So you have them in full in, uh, plantar flexion and then inversion, you test to make sure that's strong. It usually is. And then you move on to the peroneus longus, which is full plantar flexion and eversion. And this is the L5 nerve root, sorry, the S1 nerve root. This is the L5-S1 disc. 
um, you saw in this case that he couldn't do that movement at all and it was weak when I uh, tested it and he could not resist against my force. And then you move on to the toe extensors and this is just a double safety check if you like. Sometimes you can get the toe extensors weak and the other two are not weak. Um, the toe extensors could be either the L5 uh, disc space or the L4 disc space, but usually L5 S1. Uh, so test the toe extensors. Now once you have a weakness, and it should be only on one side, not the other, because it would be rare to have a disc protrusion that affected both sides, you then move on to lateral flexion. In this case it was the left uh, leg and that was weak on the peroneus longus. And so what we did was have him bend away from the side of the lesion. As he bent to the right, away from the side of the lesion, uh, nothing happened. It didn't get any stronger. That meant that leaning him away wasn't making it better. We then leaned him towards the side of the lesion, and in that case it did get better, i.e. the strength came back to us, to the uh, foot. And that meant that it was a posteromedial L5-S1 disc bulge on the left. And uh, I'll be doing a webinar with this very patient on the Saturday the 19th of March. If you'd like to know more about the examination that we did and also how we worked out the cause of this disc lesion and how we are going about resolving it for him, I'd be happy to go through that with you. Because in 25 years of using this test, uh, well, in the first 10 years of using this test, I diagnosed 10 patients with uh, disc uh, problems that did not get better with that lateral flexion movement. And because of that, those 10 patients, unfortunately, went to surgery. And that was okay at the time, that they were verified by MRI scan, and my test was absolutely uh, spot on with the side of the lesion and the extent of the lesion. But in the last 15 years, I haven't lost one patient to surgery, no matter what the outcome of that test was. And I'd like to show you in this case, uh, what the uh, cause of that disc bulge was and how we're gonna go about solving it. So I hope you can join me uh, Saturday the 19th of March and sign up uh, to get onto that webinar. See you then.